Okay, good morning. Welcome to Minute Talks Rounds in September 2017, 2016. My name is Yad Kazi, and the topic today is mushroom poisoning. The, um, this conference today is being uh, uh, in Boston, uh, UK, at the Business of Clinical Toxicology, where I'm attending. Uh, it's uh, 4 a.m. in Boston. You will see already the date for the whole year for the uh, Minatox rounds. We, you, we are going to uh, bring you speakers from the Middle East region. Uh, I am doing this lecture because it's Adha. So, Eid Mubarak. And um, I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the whole day. The first thing is the uh, schedule for, for Minatox and Mubarak. Suhar Oman. We are going to have uh, a unique or crossroads between clinical toxicology and public health. This was with the, the Ministry of Health of Oman and the National Center for Disease Control. Then we will do the AHLS for the Geological Incidents and Terrorism in Moscow. And then we are going to do a demonstration of radiation decontamination, which is unique. A unique exercise. And 12 will be in Suhar, which is about an hour and a half away. Okay. Suhar is also about two hours away from Dubai by car. There we will conference, and then February 13 we'll have a post course symposium on toxic chemicals in industrial applications. It will be a symposium on February 13, which is Monday. I hope the web is being updated continuously. over common classes of poisonous mushrooms and punishment. I'm a couple of cases that I've had at the beginning. The first thousand nine in Georgia in the USA. A three year old Mexican man who uh, had, had no past medical history. He was department uh, outside Atlanta, about two hours away from Atlanta, complaining of pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Night, when he entered, he uh, ingested three hours, uh, 12 hours before, 12 hours before presentation, he, he ingested three mushrooms. He's in a, uh, in a side, uh, under a tree, then, Given a sandwich and ate. Upon the department, he was awake and fully oriented. His blood pressure was normal. His pulse was a little bit fast, 96 per minute. Other exam was normal. But 16 hours after the ingestion, he had elevated alanine amylase. So ALT was elevated a little bit at 49. And at 62, he also had a case of 265, which is a B of 23, and a creatinine of 1.9. So his creatinine was not normal. Remember, this is a 23-year-old man. So he's the other day. With that point, when we saw these labs, we, on the phone, told them to keep him in the hospital. And happy because we are concerned that he has this elevated creatinine for his age. Thirty hours ingestion, he looked, but his lichen test started rising. It was twenty nine and thirty three for his age. And, and during that period, we had already recommended that he actually gets transferred to our hospital in Atlanta. Time frame, he came back to Atlanta by ambulance, and he was admitted to medicine at Great Hospital in Atlanta. Personally. 
Uh, he, uh, his liver function got really worse. His AST went up to 5,000, 46,000, then 10, and out of 3. I love you that I'm going here that I will tell you about later, but he's, he's being treated all through this process. And, and was discharged on day 9 in stable condition. So this is a case that we will talk about later on. It was in 2004, when I was actually at Emory. This four-year-old man, who was about uh, 30 minutes drive from Grady, in cardiac to eight Amanita muscaria mushroom caps. Had bought these, these mushrooms on the internet because your properties and offered them to his friend. Uh, he said, Do you want to taste these mushrooms? So he went ahead and, and, and take a large, large amount. And this is the way she bought the Amanita Muscaria from. And you can see I had to go pick him up from the from the actual uh, uh, because were seized as evidence. So up and uh, eat them in a, in a jar. And this was like if you take them out of the jar, which is yeah. Anyway, the patient uh, ate uh, those mushrooms. He had the cardiac arrest. Although he recovered from the initial arrest, he died nine later. There in the U.S. and in most cases, you will not know what the mushroom is. It's hard to become an expert mushroom. So you know, you be able to identify a mushroom. Is good challenge. The best is to understand which uh, groups they belong to, and the groups of uh, mushrooms and the type toxins and poisoning syndromes involved. Okay, then bring every single mushroom. You should probably be familiar with. The cycle is famous because of the liver failure. There are Gallerina and Lepiota. The gyro, which uh, causes a seizure, that's Metra Esculenta. These are mushrooms that contain muscarine, which causes an energy crisis because of the uh, agonist activity. And mushrooms there are Ketocybe and Inocybe. You have the mushrooms. The copy mushrooms, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but the prototype Muscoptinus atamidus. Our patient uh, ingested amanita muscaria, which is a botanic acid and misamol. Mushrooms, the hallucinogenic mushrooms. That's the Aiden mushroom. Dye irritants, those are the ones that people in general, they're bad, but they're GI irritants. These are the mildest uh, toxicity here. We have other uh discussed in a few slides, and then Nick Norsein, unidentified mycotoxins, I'm sorry, myotoxins, which is rhabdomyolysis and myocarditis. If you become familiar with this table, then that's enough. In your assessment of mushroom poisoning, you don't need to understand all the names and the names. What you need to understand here are the toxins and the toxic drop. So this is a patient who has status epilepticus, adequate blood glucose, and repeated high dose of benzodiazepine. 
champions. So you have a patient with refractory seizures. Which of those should be considered? I mean, like that in blue, pyridoxine, or thiamine. The answer is the land for refractory seizures. The high rate of action is at which of the following? Blocker, GABA agonist, GABA antagonist, so you have blocker, and the end, GABA antagonist. So the question you have to understand the next one, which is Zaromitin. Because it's very similar in appearance to a very delicious mushroom called morel. You may say, okay, and see morels are on the menu. Yes, morel, because it's like a morel, but it's not a morel. Because it's the of gab. The same as isoniazid works, which is tuberculosis. The same as hydrazine, fuel. No. So, high fuels, isoniazid, and this mushroom, it, the acid decarcelase, which is then the form GABA. And usually, those of GABA deficiency. When you know more GABA, you can get a refractory. You can get also the acidosis, heavy muscle cramps, and GI distress. And this uh, poisoning is by the antidote paradox. It's going to actually as the body to overcome this inhibition of glutamic acid decarboxylase. Now you can always the azepines, but you find that the azepines will not work, work for years because no GABA. Remember, azepines and barbiturates are indirect. They need but to work. There's no GABA, they won't work. Refractory seizures. Occurring. And the antidote is paradox. Is the miscreen containing mushroom? Stilocybe and inocybe. They cause a cholinergic crisis. crisis. Similar to an organophosphate. Relations and the muscular paralysis. So the salivation, the lacrimation, the urination, the distress, bronchorrhea. Brospasm, meiosis, and the atropine. This is usually quite self limited. The mushrooms are the coprine containing mushrooms. It's interesting because the myth of coprine is aminocyclopropanol in the body, which acts as sulfuram. So it acts like antabuse. So if you drink alcohol, the program like reaction as vomiting, flushing, tachycardia happens 72 hours later of the mushroom and the and fluid and additional alcohol uh, Second, ingested the uh, amanita muscaria, which, which contains botanic acid, and this is mushroom. Mushroom contains two toxins, uh, a botanic acid, which are to glutamic acid, and this small, which is similar to GABA. So stimulation as well as sedation. So it will usually um, alternate between stimulation and sedation. So the hyperstate or a hypostate. 
and I, this is the only the case report of that that abstract years ago. And we're confirming that exposure using a diagnostic assay. The so mushroom poisoning is really supportive as well. Psilocin, uh, uh, mushroom that's very famous. Psilocin and psilocin, they look like serotonin. So it's like who ingested uh, or M. So the cardiac tremor and the tree also supports it. Remember the one poison you're gonna see is the GI irritant, which is self limited. People who eat them will have a rapid onset of GI distress, usually three hours. Quickly and it's supportive. Except that the onset here is worse. This is Because that's how you are going to differentiate it from more poisonings that have that of vomit. So the job here is very early, within three hours. This is the key triage criteria. Go over uh, two or three uh, rare types of exposures before we finish up with the actual main one, which is ananita poison. So, this one is orinine, orinine, companion, renal failure that may require dialysis or transplant. Alanine, Messiana, is also a nephrotoxin. And finally, the rhabdomyolysis associate mushrooms like tracolema to equestry, like myolysis and myocarditis, lethal. And that's report in the literature in the New England Journal of Medicine of uh, a series of these exposures and, and myocarditis. You can look at it. Up. To finish, I'll talk about cyclopeptides. Cyclopeptides goes till the end. Discuss those right now at length. Most important mushroom class that you need to deal with. This is the action containing conditions that can cause liver failure. Now, the classes contain, but also contain phylotoxin and toxin. Example toxins are absorbed by the GI tract. But they are the hematoxins, and that's what causes actually diarrhea and in these patients. It's a lobe on the, in the intestinal tract, and it's actually going to the stress. Uh, so then the GI irritants you saw earlier, vomiting at six hours, it make you worry when you have a patient comes to you and they eat a mushroom. Vomit in this fashion that should make you get worse. It's absorbed from the intestinal tract, and that one has a more delayed toxicity. It has intrahepatic circulation, so it actually cycles to the bile and gets reabsorbed again by the intestine. There are different terms that contain this. The Manita phylloides. Marginata is also present in the Macrolepiota racodis. Manita virosa is very famous. But the most important one is this one, Manita phylloides. He ate Amanita by Spoyera. Which box? I'm a top RNA polymerase, and we'll talk over organs like the GI, liver, and kidneys. <clears throat> because of its late nature, it be absorbed by the intestine, and then it needs to the liver, for example. 
you will know the effect very early. Stress is delayed as a benign GI irritant mushroom ingestions, which cause vomiting within six hours. Remember, we said three hours is the onset of vomiting. Important to remember and use that in your triage of patients to sick, not sick. Once the in the liver, it can cause liver failure, which is very severe. And you saw that in the patient, you got worse over 72 hours and had fulminant hepatic failure later on. That also has some effects on the kidney, renal failure, you may see some neuropathy, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a part of amatoxin poisoning is the liver failure. If you identify the mushroom, you take a test, which is alpha amanitin, which is the amatoxin. And use a newspaper type material, like a newspaper. You add juice on this page, you add hydrochloric acid, and it will over one to two hours if it's amatoxin. So this is here blue which is part for amatoxin. I test here because it's of historical importance, and maybe it's quite an exam, but I think uh, it's as relevant to emergency medicine residents as you can, but it's just good to know in general. These things can, this, this eta poisoning can be fatal. So you have to, and you have to be very aggressive with the therapy. Remember, when I saw that guy uh, in Georgia, he had renal failure and slight bump in his LSTs upon arrival. So I immediately recommended therapy. And the first thing I tried was multiple dose activated charcoal. The most toxin it goes through the uh, enteropathic circulation and it insults the liver again and again and again. So what you to put charcoal in the intestine to buy it in that process, that interpretation circulation. Thayok is another uh, theoretical therapy that I actually don't use, but I use as a potential option. The from this therapy is uh, controversial. We can have many options. I use penicillin G. We block the uptake of toxin by the site. The dose is 1 million unit per kilogram per day. So I gave my guy 7 units of insulin per day. I'm sorry, not insulin, of insulin per day. I am. The dose for strep throat is 1.2 million. Here you get 70 million, 7-0. And procedures, and those are procedures, so you have to be careful. But recommended for uh, made of poisoning. Finally, the uh, therapy is uh, preferred as well for amate of poisoning is silicone. Is milk thistle extract, which we present in Lebanon, for example, and uh, contains uh, silibinin, silicristin, and silidianin. This is probably the best therapy for amata poisoning. The receptors inhibiting hepatocyte penetration by the toxin. Now, the one thing that's important about silibinin. That uh, currently it's also available as a therapy, as an intravenous therapy in the US, and it's being researched. The drug loan. Uh, it is being uh, researched in the US by Dr. Todd Mitchell, a uh, colleague of ours who's actually here uh, in Boston. I'm going to potentially uh, join us today, but I think it's too early for him. He wasn't able to do that. But uh, it is now available to you as on the wall. 
it's being evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. So the is also available in Europe and in Europe for these cases. Audits include acetylcysteine or mucus because of liver failure and some Remember, you have to be very aggressive. If they get better, they get worse quickly, and you have for a liver transplant. So, amatoxin is very dangerous poisoning. The GI distress is delayed, more than unlike the GI irritants, which is within three hours. And all remember that the treatment here is silibinin or milk thistle. In my case, the formulation was not available, so I had to send the friend of my patient to the pharmacy, to the to the rural, uh, vitamin store, to buy and we milk thistle tablets orally. I think we could do for him. We could not give the IV. It was not available in the U.S. at the time in 2009. So there we today. Remember the ten classes. Today we discussed the amatoxins. We discussed the uh, uh, class geometrin, which causes seizures. We discussed the class of uh, psilocybin, which causes hallucinations. We discussed the big mushrooms that cause cholinergic crisis. We discussed the uh, amitamoscaria type mushrooms, which cause hallucinations and sedation, like my patient who died. Toxins and myotoxins, the G toxins, and finally finished up with the most dangerous one, which is amatoxin, uh, mushroom poison. That's all. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm, uh, I look forward to your questions. I'd like to just uh, send them by chat and I can uh, read them. Is there questions or comments? Thanks, but uh, here it's rare to see. Even if you see, you will not think about mushroom pasta. <laughs> I think, like, although it's common, I think it's good to open up your open up your mind, all of us, because of it. People can things on the internet nowadays. Yeah, right. but, um, I don't know if 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 somebody eating here mushrooms and if mushrooms coming from markets are also toxic. You have a comment with that. Uh, local mushrooms? No, um, that came from markets and they cook it. Is it toxic also? Or the most that uh, they get it from nature and uh, are toxic? No, I think those are really uh, um, uh, raised. Uh, they know what they are. So they're toxic. The ones that are toxic are potentially somebody going in the uh, in their own in nature. And we call that foraging for mushrooms. It's come up in some parts of the United States. They go out in the, in the woods and they pick up mushrooms. You see jaromitrin, for example, look morel, which is a delicacy. So people get big and with that one. And other types of mushrooms, too, they made them thinking they're, they're delicious, but they get sick. What you buy is usually uh, well identified and it's not toxic. In one, we have the Amanita Falloides mushroom. Break uh, about two years ago in Turkey. Uh, this mushroom in Izmir. There was a massive outbreak in India several years ago. Uh, this Amanita mushroom is in, is in the liver bile and it's excreted by the gallbladder. In India, where they don't have the antidote. They've tried to do percutaneous drainage of the biliary system, uh, uh, drain from the skin into the gallbladder, draining the bile. Try uh, the uh, toxin from circulating, and that worked for for them in India. Lebanon. I'm opening. Uh, um, Recording, but I'm going to open up the uh, um, 
the box so I can read your uh, read your chat message.